Defense Deaths in Custody March in Sydney. And I went there because the dancers in 1993 in Sydney at Circular Quay. Sign. And you can see the signs in the background here. Now, these are, you know, I don't know what year it was, but it's in the 80s, maybe 80, 85, 86, maybe. Maybe even earlier than that, I'm not sure. Because they danced in 1980, and again another time, I can't remember. Okay, we're sitting at Carriage Works, and um, we've just been in, in um, uh, walking around the exhibition, the celebration of NASDA for 40 years, and, um, and I'm sitting with Carol Johnson, my friend, for. <laughs> I think about 38 years of the 40 years I've been taking photographs and, and Carol's been my friend and she's even met different husbands <laughs> to be personal <laughs> and I've met <laughs> and, and she knows my kids and I know her, her son and yeah and we always catch up and time to time and also the photographs that I've taken over those 38 years are very important to me and and I wanted them to um, be part of history and also to have community access all this time, I think, you know, so that I can, they can be seen and, and used and appreciated. Yeah. Yeah, they are important, the photos. Yeah. And they're a fantastic historical record, yeah. which we're lucky to have, and it's got to be not only preserved, but presented so that people can have yeah. more access to it, particularly young people, because it does tell the story of the early days have other people and we have so many different ways you know, with technology with the video that we didn't have when, yeah. when you started yeah. out. Yeah. And also I, I really saw Carol struggling to always fill out grants and budgets <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and also worrying about food for the kids, uh, the students even and <laughs> well, you had to do the, everything like be the mother and, um, and if somebody in the family became deceased, or, or one of the students. I mean, that was even more traumatic <laughs> to lose one of our students. Yeah, I, I saw that happen as well. Yeah, um, uh, youth, terrible. Youth suicide, which is a big issue now. It's a bigger issue now than it was at that time. And so hopefully, uh, NASDA can do something to keep alerting the students and to its dangers. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they've come a long way, and, and you know, people ask me, uh, did I think it would be this good uh, or come this far? And in a sense, I did, but I, in another sense, I didn't know what it would feel like to have all the students and to, what it would feel like to see all the different independent choreographers out working and all. And so the feeling is what I didn't know what like, but I was sure that uh, NASDA would survive, and I was hoping that Ben Garrett would, and it has for 28 years, and has made a big difference to Australia. Internationally. Yeah, and it took a whole lot of people to do it and make it all happen. It wasn't just one person, yeah. but we, there were different drivers. Feeney was the first really driver that made sure everything happened. Okay. Then I kept, kept it going. Then it had a low period, and then uh, we worked hard. And Robin Harris is a person people don't, haven't talked about, but she saw us through the dark period yeah, and yeah. sort of helped steer yeah. steer us all together. And then we got Kim, mm -hmm. who was a founding one of the founding students, mm -hmm. although or establishing students, because yeah. there were eleven of the, them, the six that start that started before 1976, and then the other five that came in. And they made it, the yeah. whole the whole 11 of them, and I wouldn't discount any one of them, because they were really very important. And, and one of the 11 was Cheryl Stone. <laughs> Wasn't she amazing? Yeah. Well, yeah. She, she and also, it. I think Richard Hamonga was such a good role model. 
I don't know if he was a role model. He was a good dancer. He was a good dancer. Not a role model. Yeah, okay. Well, you know the other dancers did look up. As a That's dancer. what I meant, as a dancer. As a dancer, he was a great <laughs> dancer. <laughs> because he's a character, we don't want to put him down on anyway. No, no, he was great. Well, he was great, yeah. Mm. I just remember one time seeing him dance. It was a party after the end of the year show, and when he was dancing on the dance floor, you know how you just dance to rock and roll? I couldn't believe how he was dancing. I thought, how much energy has he got? Because they just had the end of the year show, and then he was out there wiggling like a, oh my God, looked like a locomotive. <laughs> Yeah, he was a very, he was a very good performer. He had very clean line, mm -hmm. and uh, he was one of the. Well, they were all very good because they, yeah. the ones that didn't have any, say like Malcolm Cole, he did, he had no technique. And in fact, when he came, he was a, he had been a, like a he was a laborer uh, who worked on the streets or something like that. And I thought, what in the world is he coming here for? But by the time you see him on that picture, he changed his body and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was amazing. Well, a lot and, of the... And very steady. Yeah, and didn't, and he, he, um, a, a, lot, a lot of the dancers looked up to him too, like mm -hmm. a friend. He was a good, yeah. he was a good friend to me. You know? yeah, yeah, well, he was so warm and embracing. Yeah. He embraced everybody. Yeah, that was... I think one thing I'd like to say too is that I'm not sure if, <clears throat> a lot of people know it, but I, I remember um, there was a time when sort of Monica took over, or John and then Mo Monica, and that I, I sort of um, remember I didn't do the end of the year show anymore, or um, I didn't follow. They had other photographers, and that was good, and, and Bangar did too, because they could afford it, and so forth and so on. But I tried to follow up on where Percy was or uh, where Wayne was, and you know, and I went with you up, and we saw we saw Wayne, remember? In Cairns. In Cairns, and so I tried to um, follow some people and meet up with people later. And I remember photographing Malcolm Cole on the back of a truck here in Chippendale, and he had a microphone, and he was saying, "Yeah, we're going to get these land thieves out," and it was a protest about something. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was it was very interesting, you know, to follow up and see people, or, or even how the Aboriginal dancers went on protests and marches for land rights and that sort of thing. So well, that's how the whole thing started, really. Dancing in front of the embassy, ten embassy, the first ten embassy in 1972. Yeah, it's really, and it's been part of the whole political struggle or the political situation. Points points things out, dance can point things out in a way that no other uh, art form can. You know, you tell a story about the culture and keeping the culture and. In the history too, and I mean, in a way, the, it's a little bit historical because we're both Americans. Mm -hmm. Andy is too, that made the film that's in there, and I'm so proud of that. And we're all three friends. And um, well, that film is very important. And yeah. I think Andy needs more credit for what she did because it was the first. To me, it was one of the first films that really worked with Aboriginal people, even though they didn't make it and direct it. She really worked very hard with them and it changed the way films were done with Aboriginal people, I thought. It did. It uh, was like an eye-opener. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and and having Brian Siren in it was important, and a lot of the founding members but, um, that went on, you know, even Lily and Jeff Lily Davis was, was part of it, you know, and he started, uh, he wrote so many plays later on that were seen, and that was the first play that he did for that workshop that he had seen presented because he had been a journalist and a poet but not a playwright before. Mm -hmm. He was a, he was a writer, an accomplished writer. Yeah. 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 It was a, it's a very important film. And um, <clears throat> I remember Andy saying that somebody asked her, okay, what are you gonna what are you gonna film me next? What's your next project? And she goes, I'm like, I don't want to be a filmmaker. I just wanted to do this one film. <laughs> and she really she went on to do film. many other professions, didn't she? Yeah, well, she, she was a mediator. That was a good thing. She actually, she was the uh, communications person, public relations, who put NAISD uh, or AIDT 
on the map, really. She put all of the NWA shows before that, and it was at the time because it started, she started working for us maybe around 1984, 85, in the publicity area. Yeah. Uh, she started working very directly, and that was important. It was right when you needed to get money. <laughs> Well, well, we needed well, money attention. all the time, yeah. but the, the pu public and positive attention That's right. was really very good yeah. and helped in the whole survival, story of survival. Okay, so thank you very much. Good. Anything else you want to say? No. <laughs> okay, thank you.